Ever wonder what it would be like to travel on your own boat and cruise the Great Lakes and waterways, making each passing day a new experience? We'd like to take you along with us as we untie the lines and set course for the adventures that await us across the deep waters to the vast shorelines of the Northeast region. We are Jim and Joan Entwistle of the vessel Joan Lynn. Come aboard with us this season as we cruise, explore, and experience the waterways and coastal amenities of the Northeast region. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us beginning with this episode of Cruising Joan Lynn. Let's begin now. I woke up this morning and I said, you know, instead of waiting for a good day to happen, you know, waiting around the ups and downs, you know, I, I just said, look. Boaters and cruisers of the Great Lakes system are plagued with the misfortune of having to endure long, cold winters that constrain boats to dry land and imprison skippers and their crews into restless hibernation ashore. While we wait out the long winter months, Jim and I find the time to research and plan for our cruising summers. Using the internet, we scan the shorelines and gather information about various points of interest that appeal to us and begin planning our next adventures. Over the winter months, we save our pennies and never stop shooting and editing video for the next season's series of episodes. Boaters and cruisers of the Great Lakes system are plagued with the misfortune of having to endure long, cold winters that constrain boats to dry land on the first day of spring, a trip to our local West Marine where everything on the shelf is overpriced, check some items off of our to-do list. Well, at least they get $10 off. Today is boat pickup day and we're excited because this is actually Joan's first time ever here. Furthermore, I guess we wanted to say that uh, this year, unfortunately, we have, uh, we're a little bit behind in getting the boat into the water. Um, not because of high water levels this year or because of any problems with the boat, but it's because of some uh, work being done over at the house. We're having our driveway replaced this year and added a concrete slab for the Joan Lynn to rest on. Weather held back the project and the concrete still needs four more weeks to cure. We have made arrangements with an associate of ours to leave the Joan Lynn on his property until the concrete hardens and we can bring her home to ready her for our first cruise. So because of that, Memorial Day weekend probably won't get out on the boat, won't get out until June. So we keep waiting. back to Rochester now to get her up to the marina. So we were pulling the boat out of the barn and Jim was getting aerial footage of it with the drone and the guy that owns the barn was interested in having some aerial shots of the farm. So we were, Jim was getting the aerial shots of the farm and then something happened. While we were landing the drone, the battery started to, sh t started to die. The drone's return home sequence kicked in and sent the drone directly up in the air just as it was two feet from landing. The drone hit the branches of a tree before we could react and abort the auto landing sequence. It fell to the ground and sustained heavy damage. Uh, we'll look into either getting the drone repaired or replacing it uh, for, the, for the upcoming summer. From the barn, we trailed the Joan Lynn directly to the marina for service, and the next day trailed her out to a meadow outside of town 
where she would wait the next 28 days for her concrete pad back home to cure. The driveway finally cured and the day came that we could safely back the boat into our driveway. A week beforehand, Jim brought a case of beer and chips to the landowner for allowing us to keep the Joan Lynn on his property. While the boat waited, Jim changed out the trailer tires that were in dangerously rough shape. With the Joan Lynn now finally home, we spent Memorial Day weekend cleaning her up and getting her ready for her first big splash of the season. One of the things that we have to do this year is install new carbon monoxide detectors in both the cabin and the berth. The manufacturer changed the design of these over the past five years and now they kind of look like this. And that takes care of the new one. Let's test it. Works. The anchor is a boat's only form of a brake. We inspected the anchor, chain, and road, looking for signs of wear or damage that could lead to failure on the water. And this is something that no boater should ever leave the dock without. I'm just a half on, half off kind of lover. It don't take too much from you to get me under the covers. I wanna hop on and hop off. We are finally finished with everything that we had to do in the boat, and the boat is now ready for its first cruise. Uh, I, I am beat. Beat. I need coffee. But unfortunately, due to our schedules, I don't think we're going to be able to get out for another couple of weeks yet. Whoa, whoa, wait, though. Maybe in the real world, we got a few weeks to wait, but in the world of making video, we could be there in an instant. Watch. See, I told you so. Hey, wait a minute, take us back. You know, I have a meeting this week and what about Cole's baseball game? Come on, can I take us back? Can no, it? <laughs> it, it, only, it only works when you're the one editing the scene on the computer. Well, take us back now. Fine. So we invite you to come along with us on our maiden voyage of 2018, but in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for our next episode of Cruising Joan Lynn. And don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> And follow us on Facebook at Cruising Joan Lynn. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. We got up early this morning and dropped the boat in the water for the first time this season. We're ready to shove off. Here we go. This one wasn't different in a good way. 